Well, it's that time again. I haven't made a video in a while, mostly due to uh, work obligations. But I figured uh, it would be a good time to uh, feature these two meters I have in front of me. Uh, the top one is an HP 400E AC RMS voltmeter, and the bottom one is the HP 3400A RMS voltmeter. They both have the same bandwidth. They both cover 10 hertz to 10 megahertz. They both have the same measurement range of uh, 1 millivolt to 300 volts. But that's pretty much where the similarity stops. The, the top one is an average responding RMS voltmeter. And the bottom one is a true RMS voltmeter. Now the top one, it's pretty much good for just sinusoids only. If you try to measure any other waveform, it will introduce measurement errors that will have to be corrected. The bottom one though, on the other hand, doesn't care what the waveform shape is. Uh, this top one here, if you have a uh, service manual that calls for a uh, vacuum tube vo AC voltmeter, this meter here will fit the bill nicely, as long as whatever you're measuring is within the range of the meter. Uh, this one here, if you need to measure noise or uh, things of that nature, pulse trains, this is the meter of choice. So let me uh, get the uh, function generator fired up and uh, I'll... Uh, we'll step through a couple of measurements. So the parameters of this test, we're just going to uh, just demonstrate the meter's functionality. We're using a 1 volt RMS output at 400 hertz. And the meter is showing 1 volt RMS. Now I can change the uh, wave shape. We can go to square wave and it shows 1 volt. I can change it to a triangle and it shows one volt. Positive ramp, same thing. Now we'll go back to sinusoid and it's you know on the money. Now this meter up here on the other hand is a little different so we will switch over. I can do this with one hand here. Come on, get on there. All right, and it is also showing one volt. Now, if I change this to square wave, now you can see it's reading a little high. It's reading a 1.1 some odd volts. This is the uh, because the this meter is only designed to be used to measure sinusoids, so there's a uh, a scale factor that's involved. And so if you use this meter to measure square waves, you need to subtract the scale factor. So if I go to 2 volts RMS, and I see it's reading 2.2 volts, just a shade high, 2.22 uh, volts. And that's because of the scale factor. It's uh, on this scale, it's 0.11 volts per volt. So the higher you go in voltage, the higher that reading is going to be. Now if we go back to one volt, it's fine. And if we go back to sinusoid, it reads correctly. So for anything other than sinusoids, this meter is, uh, well, for any, you know, any other, or just sinusoid only, this is the one you want to use. Now, if you want to measure noise or uh, pulse trains, then this is the one to do it. And mostly because of its scale factor. Uh, this meter has a scale factor of 10, which generally refers to the, uh, oh, I'm looking for the word here, the uh, the difference between, uh, okay, let's say a pulse train has a an RMS value of one volt, but the pulses themselves have a voltage of eight volts. That difference would, would mean that uh, you would need a meter of at least scale factor of eight to correctly read the voltage. So this meter here is excellent for doing uh, noise measurements of power supplies, doing uh, receiver noise level measurement tests, etc. You could do that with this one, but it would be limited. You could do, you could hook it up to the audio output of a of a transceiver and and uh, and still measure its sensitivity, but you may be off by a dB or two or or however. But the one on the bottom, it's pretty much spot on all the time. 
but um, it's I've had these, these meters for a while. They're really similar on the inside. They both use a dual stage uh, attenuator. They use an impedance converter. However, the impedance converter in this one uses a vacuum tube. It's called a it's called a uh, new Vista. It's a real tiny tube. I got some here that I'll dig out and I'll show it to you. This one here is all solid state. It uses a FET instead of a, a vacuum tube, but it's still a good meter even though you really can't measure anything other than sinusoids with it, and it's extremely accurate. Uh, as a matter of fact, this meter's been around uh, since the 40s. <laughs> they first came out with this meter, I think it was in 1943. This one was made somewhere in the late 70s, and they continued this meter all the way into the, to the late 80s, I believe, before they finally discontinued it. Uh, this one here came on later. It was first available in 1963 and was made all the way up into the mid-90s with the uh, 3400B version, which was had the same case, you know, the same, uh, same style, but was completely different on the inside. So uh, let me do uh, another, uh, grab some stuff here, and then we'll keep going. For the next test here, we have a, uh, an HP uh, 8031B uh, pulse generator. We have the uh, period set to uh, 1 microsecond or 1 megahertz, and we have the pulse width set to around 10 nanoseconds. And we have the output set to about 1 volt RMS. So, according to this meter, we have a pulse train that measures uh, 1 volt RMS. And if we change meters, this meter here shows significantly less. It's showing just a little over, let's see, a little over 0.7 volts. So this would kind of demonstrate that, you know, these meters here aren't really designed to be used for pulses and square waves or anything that's non-sinusoid. Uh, but even, even with that, if you use it for what it's supposed to be used for, it is a very good meter. It works great for, you know, peaking the IF chains of receivers and transmitters and stuff like that. As long as you're within the bandwidth of the meter, it should be fine. But now I want to kind of show uh, power supply noise uh, floor measurements and uh, which meter does better. So give me just a second. All right, for this test, we're going to measure the noise floor of this uh, Agilent E3638 power supply. We're measuring the noise floor in the 6-volt side. And according to this meter here, we are hovering around just just under 300 microvolts of noise. Now, this isn't really set up right. I sh you know, I could be putting this under a load, but uh, we'll just kind of just wing it here. So when this meter shows 300 millivolts, or <laughs> 3 millivolts, uh, 300 microvolts, we'll hook it up to this meter and uh, see what it shows. Okay, now this meter is showing <laughs> around 10 microvolts of noise. So that's uh, a significant... Um, and once again, that's because of this meter it really isn't designed to measure noise, pulse trains, or anything non-sinusoid. Uh, and it also has to do with the meter's crest factor. Uh, this meter here is about a 1.41 crest factor. This one's got a crest factor of 10, so you can really make some, some nice accurate measurements regardless of the waveform shape. So when you're hunting for meters, it's definitely worth your while to take crest factor into uh, into consideration. So, once again, for noise level measurements and receiver noise and and peaking and tweaking the uh, the IF stages of receivers, this meter would be my first choice. This one would be my second choice. But they're both great meters, and uh, I hope this at least helped. Uh, I know I just kind of just threw this together at the last minute, so. Uh, there'll be uh, more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Now, before I forget, which I almost did, I can see this thing here. This is the tube that's in this 3400A. It's about the same diameter as uh, you know, this pen, so it's tiny. 
it's only about uh, about three quarters of an inch high if that and uh, it's got these tiny little pins on the bottom bottom and these keyways make sure that, uh, that when you insert that tube in the tube socket you get it in there correctly and you don't bend the pins up well the other thing I wanted to, to point out is that this particular meter always has a little bit of offset. Uh, this is by design. This is uh, talked about in the service manual. This is why the bottom 10% of this meter is not graduated. And uh, like I said, it's just the way the meter works. It's normal. Even the uh, 3400B, which is the very latest model, still has this area that's ungraduated. So it's uh, certainly a little interesting, you know, from this one, which it rests at zero when there's no input. But this one here, this area here is res is reserved just for that purpose, and, uh, and it's typically uh, ten or twenty to thirty percent, and that's where my meter is. It's about maybe twenty five percent. So it's one little interesting tidbit for this meter.